Alright, welcome back to part 6, yeah, part 7, sorry, of this uh, chapter, chapter 18. Yeah. So we were looking at uh, field warehousing in the last uh, uh, clip. Yeah. Now field warehousing financing is uh, when the lender engages a warehouse company yeah, to act as an agent to manage the inventory for the lender. So there are three parties here. Okay, the first party is uh, the first party is okay, I can't get the uh, right. Yeah, and so there are three uh, entities yeah, involved in f uh, field warehouse financing. Uh, the first entity is the borrower, yeah, the company that borrows. Then the second would be the lender that lends the money. Yeah, but then the borrower will pledge the inventory to the lender. But the lender, rather than um, uh, holding the inventory in trust, like in trust receipt, or uh, having a blanket lien yeah, on the inventory, what the lender will do is engage a warehouse. So the inventory will be placed in a warehouse, yeah, a third entity, that will manage the inventory for the lender. So once the inventory is sold, the proceeds from the sale will be used to pay the lender. Yeah? And therefore, uh, the company that borrows will transfer all the inventory yeah, that is pledged uh, to the warehouse. Okay, so that's how this field warehouse financing works. All right, these are some of the secured loans. Then, apart from that, you also have commercial paper. Yeah? Commercial paper would be uh, another form of unsecured loan. Yeah? But this is not a loan. This is not. Uh, stated as a loan because this is uh, a security issued by the company, the borrowing company, to investors directly. Yeah? Loan is a term used when you borrow from a specific entity like a bank or a lender or a creditor. Yeah? But here, since the commercial paper is issued to investors yeah, generally, the investors uh, purchase these commercial papers from the company. Yeah? Now, these are short-term debt securities. Commercial papers are short-term debt securities issued by large, highly rated companies. Highly rated means they are uh, uh, good credit risk companies, yeah? meaning they are not likely to default. Okay, And therefore, commercial papers are not secured. Yeah? Secured papers, yeah? there are no assets that are pledged against these commercial papers. Then, of course, you have trade credit. This will be credit uh, from suppliers, yeah? suppliers who provide credit. These are the various types of short-term uh, loans. Yeah? Now we move on to <coughs> the next slide. Okay, here we look at uh, compensating balance. Yeah? So here we have an example of a short-term loan where you have compensating balance requirement. Okay, let's look through this example. We have a $500,000 line of credit with a 15% compensating balance requirement. The quoted interest rate is 9%. We need to borrow $150,000 for inventory for one year. Yeah? So what is compensating balance? Okay, first, compensating balance uh, is actually a portion of the loan uh, which is not available for use by the borrower. Okay, the portion of the loan is not available for use by the borrower. Okay? That is called compensating balance. But interest is paid on the full amount. Yeah? This effectively raises the cost of the loan. Yeah? Even though, let's say, you need to borrow 150000 this is what you need. Yeah? So because of the compensating balance, you may need to borrow more. Yeah? Compensating balance is 15%. So if you need 150,000, you need to borrow slightly more than that. Okay, but the interest that you pay will be paid from the total amount borrowed, yeah? not the amount that you use. Yeah? So this increases the cost of the loan, yeah? as you will see later. Right, yeah? so these are the details of the loan. $500,000 line of credit. This is the maximum loan that can there is 15% compensating balance. This is part of the loan kept in low or non-interest account. Yeah? So this is like a collateral. Okay, let's say there is uh, non-payment, then this compensating balance will be taken to uh, 
uh, pay for the remainder of the loan. Yeah? So you are told that uh, the company needs 150,000 now for one year. Yeah? That is uh, informed. Yeah? So the question is, how much do you need to borrow? Yeah, must borrow more to account for the compensating balance. So how much must be borrowed now? Yeah? So the idea is here you borrow X amount, you do not know that, multiplied by 1 minus 15%. Yeah? Because 15% of X will be uh, part of the compensating balance. Yeah? So if you minus that amount, the total that you need to get, yeah, the net amount that you get after minusing the 15% compensating balance will be 150,000. Yeah? So you can solve for x here. Yeah? X is actually 150,000 divided by 1 minus 15%. Therefore, you need to borrow more, yeah? 176,470.59. Yeah? So this is how much you need to borrow if you want to use $150,000 for one year. Yeah? You need to borrow this much for one year. 15% of this will be going towards uh, compensating balance yeah? so it will be in a, an account okay which bears no interest in yeah? which will not earn any interest okay so that's uh, how much you need to borrow yeah next question is interest is paid on the borrowed amount yeah? the interest rate is nine percent we have seen this in the previous slide nine percent is the interest rate uh, per year yeah this is per annum because this is for one year so you would have to pay nine percent interest on the total yeah? Amount borrowed, not on 150,000. Yeah? So, therefore, the amount of interest that you need to pay at the end of the year will be $15,882.35. Yeah? Now, the amount repaid at the end of the term after one year is effectively only 150,000. Why? Even though you borrow this much, 15% yeah, of this yeah, will be in the compensating balance. Yeah? And therefore, at the end, you need to pay the total amount of $176,470.59. But since 15% of this is already in the compensating balance, at the end, you only need to pay $150,000. So $150,000 plus the compensating balance will be $176,470.59, which is exact, exactly the same amount as you borrowed. So at the end, you don't have to pay this yet yeah, because uh, the net amount that you pay is only 150,000. Is that all right? Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> the effective interest rate, yeah, we want to compute the EAR, yeah, effective interest rate, and we want to do it annual, yeah, on an annual basis. Therefore, it is AAR. So the effective interest rate for the term one, one year is the amount paid in excess to the effectively borrowed amount divided by the effectively borrowed amount. Yeah? So this is the uh, interest paid, this is the excess, yeah? this is the excess paid or the interest paid divided by the amount that is borrowed, yeah? the actual amount that you borrow. Yeah? You effectively borrow this much but you pay an interest of this much. Therefore, you your interest rate is actually 10.59%. It's not 9% yeah, as stated earlier because 9% of a larger amount borrowed due to the compensating balance is this much of interest but you only use this much yeah 150,000 so you actually pay a cost of this much for using this much therefore it is higher and yeah? the cost is higher now this is how you compute this yeah 9% multiplied by 150,000 divided by 1 minus 1 15 percent yeah? this is the amount that you actually borrowed okay the borrowing amount yeah and nine percent from this will be your interest divided by 150,000 here yeah? yeah so that is how you get 10.59 percent but you can cancel these two yeah because it's 150,000 so what you do is you uh, divide the numerator by 150,000 you divide the denominator by 150,000 therefore you are left with only 9 over 1 minus 15 percent, yeah, which is the effective interest rate for a loan that has compensating balance. Yeah. So the formula for the uh, uh, period rate, yes, in this case it's period rate, but this period rate is also the EAR yeah, because the borrowing period is for one year, okay, and the interest is com uh, compounded once a year. Yeah. 
Therefore, it is the provided the stated interest rate. I stands for the nominal interest rate, nine percent, divided by one minus C. C stands for the compensating balance proportion, yeah, which is fifteen percent here. So nine minus one minus fifteen percent, there would be ten point five nine percent. Yeah. So it's clear that the compensating balance increases the R. Yeah. It is not I. Yeah. R will be greater than I as long as C is positive. Right, so this is an important yeah, implication. Yeah? Compensating balance increases the cost of borrowing. Yeah? It is more than the stated cost. The stated interest rate is only nine percent, but the actual interest rate that you pay will be more. Yeah, will be higher than that. Okay, so that's the uh, lesson from this exercise. Yeah, now we look at another type of uh, loan where you have factoring. Yeah? Factoring. Uh, last year, your company had an average accounts receivable of two million. Credit sales were twenty-four million. You factor the receivables by discounting them two percent. What is the effective rate of interest? Yeah, so that's what we're going to look at here. So you wish to factor receivables to obtain financing. The maximum receivables to factor will be two million. And this is based on average receivables last year. Okay, this is actually a continuation of that previous example. Yeah. Explanation of the example and the solution. Yeah? All right. Then the term. Yeah? You know the amount. The term here is the average time taken to collect the receivables. What is the term of the factoring or term of the loan? Yeah? You know the loan that you can borrow because factoring will require you to sell the receivables. Yeah. So the receivables that you have at hand is two million. Yeah? This is based on the average receivables last year. Okay. You assume that this will be the Amount that you have at the end of this year that you can use to uh, factor yeah, to sell to your lender. Yeah. So the average, the term of the factoring, yeah, because you can sell it now. Then how uh, long later can you sell again? Yeah. So the term of factoring, okay, will depend on the average time taken to collect the receivables. So for this, you need to know the average collection. Yeah, you need to get the ACP that we have seen at the beginning of this chapter. Now, credit sales is 24 million. Yeah? You are given 24 million sales. Okay, this is assumed to be collected in 12 months. Yeah? Therefore, 2 million your receivables will be collected in how many months? It must be one month. Yeah? So, 2 million divided by 24 million times 12, so you get one month. That is the term of the factory. So it implies that you can sell two million at the beginning of the year. Then after one month, you can sell another two million because your two million receivables will uh, build up. Yeah? Every one month, you have two million of receivables to sell. Okay. So here clearly M is twelve yeah? because it's compound. Uh, it is compounded twelve times. Yeah? M. Yeah? Remember the M that we have seen in time value of money, chapter six. The value, the value of n, yeah, the variable n. How many times interest is compounded per year? Yeah? So because receivables are replenished every one month, so m will be twelve times. Yeah? That is why you multiply by twelve here. Yeah? So this is uh, one month. <coughs> one month will be the term yeah, of one loan, yeah, so to speak. This is not actually a loan, but it's a sale. But you want to see what is the Cost of the sale. Yeah? Now, how much loan is received? Yeah? Receivable amount minus the discount. Yeah? So that's how factoring works. Yeah? Uh, so the lender will uh, pay you uh, the factor discount minus the factor discount. Let's say it's two million. Okay, the receivables from this two million, two percent will be deducted. Yeah? They will pay you only one point nine six million. Because once they collect, they collect the two million, they get two percent yeah, profit. Yeah, that's the idea behind factoring. Alright. Now what is the effective term or interest rate? Yeah, effective term interest rate. What is paid? The effective term here is one month. Yeah? What is paid? Foregone in excess later at the end of the term compared to divided by what is received now. Yeah? So you need to look at what is paid. Okay, this is what is uh, foregone. It is not actually paid. This is what you forego. Yeah? By selling the uh, 
receivables to the factor, you lose 2% from 2 million. 